Hey, how's it going guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and a few weeks back I made a video talking about Chinese 3D printers and whether they were worth it. Uh, I basically talked about a lot of the negative hype around them and that most of those things that is talked about online are pretty exaggerated. The feedback I got from you guys was pretty unbelievable. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who responded with their own personal experiences. Um, some of you typed up like full on reports, so um, I was pretty overwhelmed by all the feedback I got from you guys. In that video, I did mention that the quality control on a lot of these 3D printers really was not what they should be at, and that there were some simple things that could be done to make your 3D printer safer, which would nearly eliminate all of the potential hazards that some people online seem so uh, kind of enthusiastic to talk about. The first thing you can and should replace is the power supply. Uh, this can be really dangerous if it is cheaply made, and most kit printers come with a power supply that looks the same, but it does not necessarily mean that the internal components are the same and that they are of high quality. With this, you have a couple options. You can either replace the power supply with a similar style power supply from a reputable seller. At least this way, you have a track record and can see whether the seller has had any issues in the past or you can use an ATX power supply, which is like the one that is inside of pretty much all desktop PCs. I do not recommend going smaller than 400 watts on the desktop power supply if you plan on using a heated bed, but a 500 to 550 watt is even better in my opinion. Links will be in the description to where you can find out uh, the power supplies that I recommend. Once we've taken care of the power supply, we should look at our wiring. For at least the heat bed and the power supply cables, a lot of companies use kind of plastic plugs that do not necessarily make a good connection to the board. This can cause the wires to generate more heat and melt or burn out these plugs. If you have the knowledge, I do recommend soldering the wires directly to the main board as well as the heated bed to ensure a solid connection. The heated bed on a 3D printer easily draws more power than anything else and most of the cheaper boards use a MOSFET to switch the heated bed on and off. A lot of the times they are really cheap MOSFETs that cannot keep up with the demand being put on them which can cause them to burn up or malfunction altogether. I personally experienced a few beds that would just keep climbing in temperature until they could not anymore which is dangerous. If you have the knowledge you can easily desolder and resolder the MOSFETs with higher quality ones as well as add a heat sink to them. If you do not feel comfortable with soldering, then don't worry because there is an easy solution where you can basically pick up a separate board that has the MOSFET just for the heated bed. With that, all you have to do is clamp down the wires using a screwdriver and there is no soldering at all. Links will also be in the description for these as well. These are a few of the things that I think are the most important in order to make sure that you are safe while 3D printing, especially if you plan to leave the printer running while you are sleeping or away from home. If you have any other recommendations, let me know in the comments down below, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe for more great videos. I've recently updated my Patreon, so if you enjoy my content and want to help support the channel, links will be in the description. Until next time, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I am out. Peace, guys.